Americans all across this country are asking their members of Congress to take action to prevent severe budget cuts, especially to our children. The blow to public education on a national level reduces funding by more than $4 billion. What does it mean? It means that across the United States, there will be fewer services for 9 million students in the public schools and job losses for 80,000 Americans. Budget cuts, they affect real people. They also impact our children, who should be our most precious asset. Unless Congress acts now to stop these budget cuts, education funding will fall off a cliff in Virginia. Our best estimate is that the budget cuts would result in a reduction of more than $75 million in federal funding for Virginia public schools and programs serving children. These cuts affect well-known programs such as Head Start, special education, aid to rural schools, and Title I funds, which serve disadvantaged students. In addition to these programs, we would also lose programs directly related to community services that our students and their families depend on. For example, half of those covered by Medicaid are children. One third of all children in America receive health coverage from Medicaid and the Children's Health Insurance Program. Figures from a 2011 study by the Children's Defense Fund show Virginia depends on these two safety nets to meet the health needs of our children. And we need these vital, very vital programs to keep our state of Virginia healthy. On top of all this, we also risk losing $68 million from the county budget which would further weaken the quality of education for our students. The Loudoun County School Board is facing difficult fiscal decisions because of uh, excuse me, decreasing funds. The school board and the Loudoun Education Association strive to meet the needs of an ever-growing school system, one of the best in Virginia. But it becomes increasingly difficult when we are given less and less each year. Every day, teachers and education support staff come to work in Loudoun County and provide students with a high quality education. Yet, every day these same people are asked to do more and more with less and less. That's right. this, picture, this picture repeats itself across the state of Virginia in school districts, large and small, as local boards and state legislatures continue to slash education funding. Who should pay for the investments in our country's future to reduce the debt? Not just across the country, but Virginia and in Loudoun County. I don't know about you, but I for one think it's time for the wealthiest Americans and the big corporations to pay their taxes. It's time to stop sticking working families with the tab. Mm -hmm. We need a good deal for America's hard working families and that means no more cuts to vital services that everyday Americans depend on, such as schools, health care, social security, and public education. Yeah. Yeah. The funding loss is only part of the story. Funding cuts equal job cuts at a time when we need to add jobs, we need to bolster the middle class, Virginia would potentially lose more than 1,300 jobs linked mm -hmm. to cuts in federal aid to educational programs. We need to make investments that strengthen our economy, not weaken it. Senator Webb, Senator Warner, you and your colleagues in Congress must choose kids over CEOs. Yeah. We cannot continue to shortchange children and their education while giving tax breaks to the wealthiest. Congress can find another one trillion, one trillion 
in revenue by ending tax rates for income from stocks and bonds, restoring a robust estate tax, and ending tax breaks for companies that move jobs and profits offshore. That's a great we have a moral and patriotic obligation to work together to fix the financial mess we inherited while doing our best to protect core American values. It's time to stand up for our children, our communities. We need to make sure to call our members of Congress and ask them to support kids, not cuts. Yeah. Before I let you go, I want to direct you to the information that we have on the table. There are various ways to reach out to members of Congress. Don't just make a phone call. Make a phone call, send a tweet, and post on Facebook. That's right. Mm -hmm. Do not fix the deficit on the backs of our children. That's right. That's right. And now I'd like to introduce you to Mike Harrison of the Fairfax Education Association. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is Michael Harrison and I'm the president of the Fairfax Education Association. As you heard from my colleague in Loudoun, the U.S. Congress is facing a huge decision due to the fiscal cliff. As educators, we're calling on them to choose kids over cuts. Any deal to reduce the deficit must take a balanced approach between reducing spending and raising revenues. We cannot balance the budget on the backs of kids. Of kids. Most alarmingly, the impact across the board cuts would be greatest uh, on most at risk uh, children. Here's one example of what is at, at stake. In Fairfax County, we serve nearly 36,000 English learners, students for whom English is not their first language, while contributing to the rich learning environment of our schools, these students come to us with varying levels of readiness. Some of our, our children come to school with no English at all and come from families that are not positioned to help their children as they would like. Federal Title III funds, which would be the casualty of the fiscal cliff, provides hundreds of, par hundreds of parents and their preschool-aged children the opportunity to participate in early literacy programs, which provides training to parents and how to develop literacy and school readiness skills for their children. My colleague, Tempe Ferris, <laughs> teaches English at a second language school called Sleepy Hollow in Fairfax County. This is Tempe. She related a story that brings home what is at stake. She told me about a young woman who we'll call Sarah, struggled in the elementary grades. These kids are often years behind because even after they develop functional English, they have to learn content language. Sarah had many challenges, but Tempe and her colleagues never gave up on her. Sarah recently came back to Sleepy Hollow to thank those teachers and to let them know how she was thriving in high school, making good grades and excited about her future. The Title III funds are used to create additional or supplemental uh, resources for teachers like Tempe to support what they know to be best practices for children and learning for English, learn, English learners. We cannot afford these cuts to, to programs that help our young people meet academic standards and become responsible global citizens. We have to work together and fix the financial mess we inherited while still protecting our core values. There is no core value, there's no core value more important, in my view, than the future of our students. That's right. yeah. On behalf of the educators in Fairfax, I call on the United States Congress to stand up for these families and choose kids, not cuts. Yeah. 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 And to educators and parents, I would urge you to go to the website www.edvotes.org, take the kids, not cuts pledge, and hold your member of Congress accountable. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. right. I'll now turn it over to, to my colleague Jim Livingston, president of the Prince William Education Association. Thank you, Michael. I am Jim Livingston, president of the Prince William Education Association. Well, here we are, two days after the election, one in which many of our association members worked very hard to get out the vote and let people know the candidates' positions on education issues. We do this work because we care about kids. And we take very seriously our responsibility to do all we can to help protect those services that are most needed by our students. When I think of the looming financial cliff, I see faces. Faces of students who depend on the services provided by Title I programs, which offer supplementary services to schools serving poor children. I see the face of Jennifer, a third grade student working to improve her ability to read in order that she can read to her younger brothers and sisters because her mother is exhausted from working two jobs mm -hmm. simply to put food on the table. I see the face of Javier, whose parents don't speak English and are illiterate in their native language, meaning Javier came to school without a reading background. It is the Jennifers and the Javiers in our schools who will be most impacted should Congress allow the automatic budget cuts to go into effect. That's right. These cuts are not just simply numbers on a piece of paper. These numbers represent people, hard-working people, who stand to suffer because someone decided we can no longer afford to provide them with a teacher, the direct result of cutting Title I funding. In Prince William County, we're fortunate in that the association has just helped elect a new school board member. Right. Yeah. Mrs. Lily Jesse is a retired 35-year veteran of the Prince William School Division. During her career, she was a teacher and award-winning principal, earning the Virginia Governor's Award and Title I School of Distinction for the Commonwealth. Educators like Lily Jesse know the value and importance of programs like Title I and the real difference these programs can make in the lives of children whose background may not afford them the same advantages as the corporate CEO. Right. Mm -hmm. right. It is people like Lily Jesse who must stand up for children. It is people like Michael and Joey who must stand up for children. It is people like you and like me who must stand up for children. Urging our association members and members of the public to contact Senators Webb and Warner and contact Senator elect Tim Kaine. Yeah. Tell them we are committed to standing up for the services needed by the most vulnerable in our classrooms. Encourage them to stand up for our children too. Thank you. I'd like to thank you for coming out. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for supporting our children. Make the phone calls. Please pick up some information on your way out and have a very safe day. Thank you. Yeah.